In this video, we are going to review a checklist proposed to qualitatively analyze single leg loading activities. Get our very own assessment ebook and mobile app. Links are in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. It is common practice to assess the movement quality of single leg loading activities in patients with ACL injury or anterior knee pain, such as in patellofemoral pain syndrome. This is usually done by asking the patient to simply perform a single leg squat. The assumption is that movement quality of the affected leg will differ from the unaffected leg and is characterized by a wobbly or unstable knee moving in and out of knee valgus during the motion. But as clinicians we shouldn't opt to use wobbly or not wobbly as a reference when assessing the quality of a single leg bend. Overall, Single leg squat ratings have been shown to be reliable and Harrington proposed a checklist of 10 items to assess during the single leg bend. Each item is scored with a, either a 0 or 1 that corresponds to the absence or presence of the item respectively. This results in a best overall score of 0 and worst score of 10. So let's take a look at the checklist. The checklist can be used for any single leg activity, such as drop jumps or distance jumps. The single leg bend or single leg squat also exists in several different options. In another video, we discussed the decline step down test for PFPS, which uses the pain free flexion angle as the criteria. In practice, the most easily done test is to simply ask the patient to do a single leg squat motion on flat ground or to do it from a step. We will demonstrate the latter, as you can use markers more easily. So, the patient is asked to go through the motion a couple of times so that you are able to check for the different items. These are 1. Excessive arm movement to balance. 2. Leaning the trunk in any direction. 3. Pelvic drop or loss of horizontal pelvic plane. 4. Excessive pelvic tilt or rotation. 5. The weight bearing thigh moves into hip adduction. 6. The non weight bearing thigh is not held in neutral position. 7. The patella points towards the second toe, so there is a noticeable valgus. 8. The patella points past the inside of the foot, so there is a significant valgus. 9. The patient touches down with the non-weight bearing foot. And 10. The stance leg wobbles noticeably. These altered movement strategies translate to increased stress loading of the knee, which is one factor to address in rehab of patients with knee pain, such as in PFPS. Furthermore, the checklist can help in monitoring if your rehab program translates to improvements in the score and symptoms experienced by the patient. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for watching. If you are interested to learn more about rehab for PFPS, check out the video right next to me. There are two great online courses on PFPS and running rehab on study.physiotutors.com by Claire Robertson and Benoit Matthew that we suggest you check out if you regularly see patients with knee pain. Links are in the video description down below. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. This was Andreas for PhysioTutors. I will see you in another video. Bye.